Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another Tesla vlog with me, Adam Well Informed. Today I want to cover how to charge your Tesla Model 3 at home. I'll go through all your available options and the option I selected and why I chose that option. These options are catered to those with off-road parking like myself and if you have a garage or driveway this video is going to be catered for you. So before I get started I really want to thank all my subs and anyone that gauges uh, with my video. I'm really pumped that I hit 200 subs in the past week. So before I start, hit the like button, the subscribe, and hit the notification bell. It really helps me out. What equipment is provided by Tesla? When you pick up your car, you should always get one of these with the car. This is a universal mobile charger. This will allow you to charge your car using your home sockets in your home country. In my case, I have a trusty UK 3 pin. This generally gives me around 10 miles per hour. The cable is pretty long at 6 meters, so if you don't have the luxury of an external socket, it's long enough to plug into a socket inside your home. This is easily the most universal acceptable charger as it should work in any 3 pin socket here in the UK. Home or away, it functions as a cheeky backup when out and about. You should also get a Type 2 cable which enables a quicker charge than the UMC 3 pin plug. This enables you to charge from an external public charger or from your home using a designated home charge unit unless you have a tethered unit. For those that don't know the difference between a tethered and an untethered unit, a tethered unit essentially means it comes with a charging cable, untethered charger you have to plug it into your own cable every time. Final point to make with what charging kit comes with the car is that you no longer get the Commando industrial charger adapter. This used to be included free of charge by Tesla. If you have a plug that takes it, you'll need to purchase your own. I've put a link down below in the description um, if you need to have a look at that adapter. So what are your home charger options? Apart from the standard three pin UMC charger, what home chargers can I use with a type two cable? There are loads of providers out there that offer home chargers such as Project TV, Podpoint, EO, Zappi, Tesla's own wall connector and more. These may come in a 3.6 kilowatt, a 7 kilowatt or a 22 kilowatt option. Plus, you can then have an untethered universal socket or a tethered charger, just like I mentioned earlier. The higher kilowatt option, the more charge can be delivered to the car and a faster charging speed. In layman's terms, that's around 15 miles per hour for the 3.6 kilowatt, 30 miles per hour for the 7 kilowatt or 90 miles per hour for the 22 kilowatt version. Without getting into technicalities, depending on your home electrical setup, there may be some restrictions on what charger you can use, so you may not be able to get that 22 kilowatt charger, for example. If you have the charger socket for the Commando charger, you can also get the same three kilowatt and seven kilowatt speed of a home charger, depending on your electrical setup. So which home charge unit did I get and why? I went for a 7 kilowatt tethered home charger by Podpoint at a grand price of £559 and that included installation. You can buy it untethered for £529, but for a £30 difference in price, it was way more convenient to have the cable there attached and ready rather than having to attach to the Type 2 cable every time. For convenience, I just thought it'd be worth every penny. This was a total of £559 and that includes the £350 OLEV grant which is a cost contribution from the UK government to install a home EV charger. Previously this was £500 but they since dropped it to £350 and I'm sure it will drop again and eventually be removed at some point. In regards to installation, usually the cable has to run to your consumer unit which is located on the opposite side of my house. So I was a little worried about having the cables running across the house into the unit, but thankfully I didn't need any cabling inside the house. I believe the contractor used by Podpoint installed a switch in my meter box and it's all wired into my meter box only. No earth rod or earth spike was required. I checked it all afterwards and it's a nice clean install. Very happy with how neat the job was done. The Podpoint home charger also comes with smart features and it has its own app which I primarily use to monitor how much each charge costs me. Great for monitoring the, just the ongoing costs of charging. Moving on to the cost of charging, I recently changed my energy supply for the first time. I moved from Eon to Octopus Go. For those of you that don't know Octopus as a supplier, they've won Witch Awards for the best recommended provider for the last four years. But most importantly, they can offer super cheap energy to charge my Tesla Model 3. It's like getting a third off your petrol or gas 
just by changing your supplier. I used to pay around 16 pence per kilowatt. Now I pay around 5 pence per kilowatt. So for uh, illustration purposes, to achieve 833 miles a month, an average amount for 10k miles per annum, it will cost just under £10. £10, whereas at my old average rate of 16p, it's around 30 So if you want access to this super cheap rate, we can actually split £100 if you use my link in the description to join Octopus. That £50 will go a long way with your EV charging, as you can see. So how does charging work then? So to charge your car, you open the charge point and stick in your charger and leave it to charge to your desired level. Mine being 80%. You can change your desired level just by using the screen in your Tesla or using the Tesla mobile app. 100% full charge should only be used for long trips where possible. Sitting on 100% charge levels for long periods of time and not using a car would cause deterioration in the battery. You can also schedule your car to charge prior to a start time. So if you did a long journey each morning in the weekday, you could simply just schedule a charge to 100% and it would finish at that set time when, within reason, of course. You can also schedule your car to charge at certain times via the car. You this can schedule it to charge at 12.30am when my 5p rate starts, and it finishes before 4.30am when my 5p rate ends. So what are the alternative charging solutions, and what are they like? I did use the Universal Mobile Charger for over a month, um, as I had to wait for my wall charger to be installed. Is it possible to use the Universal Mobile Charger? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I just didn't have access to an external plug, to be honest. Even so, though I didn't have access to an external plug, I'd still get 10 miles per hour, obviously, from my internal socket. Um, leaving this overnight would give me around 120 miles um, in 12 hours. So it's pretty easy for general usage. But with the 7 kilowatt charger... Um, it's just more convenient with that. It allows me to get all my charging in within that cheap four hour tariff window. Whereas with the universal mobile charging unit, it might not be. That leaves just the commando socket to compare with. I would need to get the socket installed for that. Plus I need to purchase the actual adapter now and arrange for an installer to connect it. But then the commando socket just doesn't have the smart features uh, as a home charger and it does not qualify for the OLEV grant of £350 towards the installation costs of the unit. I have seen though that it can work out cheaper than a 7 kilowatt wall charger but ultimately it just seemed a lot more faff to me which is why I avoided it. Finally I thought I'd cover some minor but myth busting questions. Can you charge in the rain? Yes absolutely, literally rain or snow. You may have seen one of my other videos and the charge cable comes out just fine even during nights with snow and minus temperatures. I had expected it to be frozen when it did snow but that wasn't the case for me. There are some Model 3s with an actual heated charge port to actually prevent it getting locked in. So maybe that's included in the new 2021 refresh Model 3. How do I claim the OLEV grant? Um, you don't have to claim for anything. Your installer or home charging provider will request some information to confirm that you drive uh, electric car they then file the paperwork and request the grant themselves but I almost got stung by um, a local electrician myself they wanted me to pay the full price up front and get the refund from the grant in three months sorry they get and get a refund from the grant up to three months after installation once they actually receive the grant monies themselves this is totally wrong and there's actual specific wording on this which stipulates that you pay the net amount only so don't be afraid to walk away like I did. How often how often do I charge the car? So when the car is done for the day, I put it in charge overnight straight away. This works quite well as when I preheat the car on a winter's morning, the car can warm up without sucking juice from the battery, it comes straight from the mains. Does the charger need any maintenance? Uh, no. Uh, I was told to flick the newly installed switch in the meter box every six months. That's it. Even if the wall charger broke, it's a smart connected device, so the provider should be able to connect and establish the issue remotely uh, on some occasions. I also have a three year warranty on mine via PodPoint, so I feel pretty reassured that it should last for some time. And that's it. Now you have a general know how of how I charge at home with the different options available to you. If you have any questions on home charging, do ask away. I will cover public charging in another video though. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family. Don't worry, I've got more videos on the way. Thanks for watching.